Okay, um, I'll make it just after 11.30, so let's make a start because there's quite a lot to get through. Um, and people can join if um, as we go. So, yeah, welcome. Uh, morning, everybody. Thanks a lot for joining today uh, to hear about the Heart, Sport and Physical Activity Partnership. Um, so, um, yeah, if you're just joining, if you don't mind using the chat and just putting your name and organisation and, and how familiar you are with uh, with HSP. I'm expecting that because you're here, uh, you're here to find out a little bit about HSP. So you might not be too familiar, but there will be people who've been in the sector for a while and might not have attended this session. So we've got a range of organisations and um, people have got a, a range of awareness of, of HSP and you're all very welcome. So um, my name is Adrian Ledbury and I'm one of the strategic leads for the partnership. And I'm just going to take you through a series of slides, which hopefully at the end of it, you'll be more aware and familiar of, of, of the work that we do and also how we can collaborate going forwards. So that's the idea. I'm, I'm recording it, if that's OK, um, so that uh, people who missed it are able to to catch it afterwards. Um, if you've got any questions, because I'm on um, sharing the screen now, uh, it's probably best just to take yourself off mute and um, and just uh, stop me as we go um, and and ask the question. So it's probably best to do that. I will pause after different sections and just uh, open up and ask questions. But if you want to interrupt me at any stage, that's absolutely fine. We want to keep it really informal and really interactive. And the main thing is that you, uh, at the end of it, you really understand what we do and how it relates to your work. So that that's really key. Good. OK, so um, on with the show. So um, we've done that already. So as I said, we've got a range of different audiences, uh, different different partners in the room and we've got one or two um uh, undergraduate uh, sorry graduates from the university of hertfordshire who are starting with us pretty soon so uh, welcome to one and all so yeah this is the idea i'm just going to go through a bit of background what we're aiming to achieve uh, what we do why we do it how we work and always linking into those collaborative opportunities. So that's the plan of attack for today. So first thing to mention is our name. So Heart, Sport and Physical Activity Partnership. There's a couple of things there. Um, a lot of people will know as the Heart Sports Partnership. So we've changed our name and added physical activity recently. So that's worth noting. Uh, and the reason for doing that is that we work across the breadth of sport and physical activities. So um, sport for some people has got certain connotations. So we want to make sure that people are aware that we cover the breadth of different things. Essentially, it's around movement and movement that is going to support people to be to lead an active lifestyle. So a um, couple of words, but an important um, principle. Uh, but we're still known as HSP, um, so a lot of people will refer to us that. Um, we're also looking at a new logo. So um, but the one that you see here is what we've got for the time being, uh, but we'll, we'll be launching that over the next month or so. So just watch out for that. So um, what, what is our background, what we're aiming to achieve? So this is our strategy and our strategy on a page. So quite an important document for us because it captures everything that we that we do. So um, starting with the mission uh, around working strategically collaboratively to improve the lives of people of Hertfordshire by using the power of sport and physical activity to tackle inequality and disadvantage. That's why we get out of bed in the morning um, that's why we do what we do. So everything that comes after that, our strategic objectives link to our overall mission. Um, 
the overall outcomes then of the work that we do is we're trying to increase activity, reduce inactivity levels, and importantly, reduce the inequality gap between those who are most and least active. And I'll go into a bit more detail about that uh, later on. And ultimately, it's about transforming lives through sport and physical activity. And we know the power that sport and physical activity can have across a range of social issues. So that's really what we're all about. And then uh, in between the sandwich, if you like, uh, over and above those, we've got our values, which you can see. So we're very much a values-led organization and try to live those values in the work that we do and the way that we um, do it. And then we've got these enablers of change, which are golden threads that run throughout our strategy. And, and you can see what those are. And I'll go into a little bit of detail about those later. So hopefully that gives you a good feel of, of what we're all about. And um, as it says there, a vision without a plan is just a dream. So this is our way of taking our vision and translating it into something that's quite tangible. You've also got the... Uh, the URL, the link there uh, onto our strategy page and our website. So um, that's worth, I'll, I'll send these slides, by the way, and then you'll be able to, to link into those, which um, it's quite easy to find anyway. Okay. So, yes, as mentioned, uh, this is our mission and that links to everything that we do. So, again, you've just got a, a bigger slide on that. Um for your information. And what we try to do is um, link into uh, the work that's going on and the important priorities, both across Hertfordshire and nationally. So I've just pulled out a few things, a few health related things, a few things that we're doing around crime reduction. Um, we've got the Sport England strategy in there and, and government strategies. So. Um, the strategies themselves are not so important. The main thing is that we are um, working with partners and that the clue is in our name. We're a sport and physical activity partnership. So everything we do is in connection and in collaboration with partners. And we're trying to align with uh, the priorities of our various partners. So that's the point that I'm trying to make there. Um, so just on this one, um, we're part of an ecosystem. So you can see that we were established, um, 20 years ago now. Uh, so it's our 21st anniversary this year. So we've been going quite a while. We're part of a network of active partnerships. Uh, there are 43, uh, across England, so we're the Hertfordshire one. And then if you go to Cumbria, there's one in Cumbria. If you go to uh, Cornwall, there's one in Cornwall. So it's fantastic. We're part of this network, which enables us to share and learn and, and work off each other across the country. Our main core funding comes from Sport England and our local authorities. We've got 10 in Hertfordshire, all contribute as well. So uh, we get core funding and then we work across a whole range of different partners and areas of work to track funding, to deliver and commission a number of different projects. So that's how our funding model works. As I said, we work with a, a wide range of different organizations linked to our strategic objectives. And we're based at the University of Hertfordshire, who are a fantastic host. Uh, we're here at Hatfield, it's a great environment in relation to, it's very much about learning and knowledge transfer and innovation. And hopefully we, we're picking up some of that and translating it into our work. At the moment, we've got around about 40 staff and that changes depending on the projects that we run. At the moment, we're in a, in a definitely in a growth stage. We've got a number of fantastic innovative projects, but um within our business there's quite a lot of short-term projects short-term funding and that that uh, that number fluctuates from year to year but at the moment we are 40 and we've also got a voluntary board which i'll mention later 
So um, yeah, if you've got any questions, just just come in. Um, but I'll carry on for the time being. So this is the um, the ecosystem that exists in Hertfordshire. So I think it's just worth pointing that out. And Heart Sports Partnership is just one part of the overall system. So I'm not going to go into detail about all of those, but you can see it's quite a diverse sector made up of statutory organisations, voluntary organisations. We've got a um, quite a, a vibrant health sector. We've got leisure centre operators. We've got a number of coaching agencies. So in that respect, the private sector. Um, the local authorities are probably worth mentioning. So we've got a county council, 10 district and boroughs, and then 120 parish and town councils. And they make up the the statutory sector so um so yeah and and again just going back to this idea of partnership uh we're trying to connect with all those organizations and connect them to each other so that we have um more impact as a collaborative um rather than all doing our own thing so that's a big part of what we do it's worth just understanding the geography so people who live or nearby to Hertfordshire, you'd be fairly familiar with this, but this is the 10 districts and boroughs. And you can see that there's about 18 towns that are above 20,000 in population. And then you've got quite a lot of uh, green uh, and, and nature in between them. So, um, so that's how it's, um, that's how we're organized. And, um, that's the patch that we work in. So um, I'm not sure whether there's anybody brave enough to come off mute at this stage, but uh, just for a bit of fun, I didn't know whether anybody's got any fun facts about Hertfordshire that make it quite unique that you'd only find in Hertfordshire. Anybody on the call who's willing to do that? Got any ideas? We have garden cities in Hertfordshire. I'm not sure they exist anywhere else. Yes, excellent. That is one of the things on my list. Yeah, well done. Anybody else? Okay, I'll put you out of your misery. So, yes, home of the garden city movement. So we invented it, Ruth. Not just we have them, we invented it. So a guy called Ebenezer Howard in 1903 and Lex was, was the first one. Stevenage is a really interesting one. Uh, a lot of people talk about Holland and Scandinavian countries, but in fact, uh, Stevenage has got a cycling infrastructure to rival those places. And it was built in 1946. Uh, the cycling in, in Holland, et cetera, was kind of 1970s. So, uh, so that's interesting. Um, so certainly in terms of our businesses, um, we have quite a thriving business sector. So, um, that's that one and a global leader for film and TV production. So there are more TV and film studios in Hertfordshire than there are in Hollywood. Fun fact. And they're growing all the time. If anybody's been. Uh, around Boreham Rudd recently, you'll you'll see that. So a thriving film and TV sector. And we, because of our proximity to London, a lot of people commute into London. And that is 51% of our transport journeys. Have I got another one? No. Okay. So I think it's always useful to understand um, where you're working and some of the... Um, some of the factors um, and some of the, the, the contributing things linked to the place that we are. And I'll go into a little bit more detail about that uh, relative to sport and physical activity. So there you go, a few fun facts. So making the case. Um, so this is this section is all about the power and sport and physical activity. And we know we've got evidence that Sport and physical activity can be 
fun. It can be great in its own right. Just participating is enough. But in addition to that, we know it can make a fantastic contribution to all these different areas. And that's one of the privileges of working in the sector that we're able to contribute to various social outcomes. And, and going back to our, our vision and mission is about transforming lives through sport and physical activity. So, um, so that's what we're all about. Um, I'll leave this, this slide in. So uh, it's a good link and there are various videos in here linked to individual impact stories. Really, really good short videos, uh, three or four minutes long. And they're taking different um, people from different walks of life and just showing how sport and physical activity has it impacted on them. So they're great videos to watch. Just wanted to then pick up this, uh, one of our enablers of change within our strategy around insight and then just feed that into some of the, the insight that's coming out across Hertfordshire that drives our work. So this is from the Active Lives Adult Survey. And uh, it's quite a busy slide, but you can see from this that the groups are, who are the most inactive are those with a limiting illness and those aged over 75. So... Um, you can also see within our diverse ethnic diverse communities, black and Asian communities are least active. And those from lower, um, lower uh, economic backgrounds, income backgrounds are inactive as well, uh, are more inactive as well. So the, this is the kind of information that's, uh, that's driving our work streams and our work areas. And we're also trying to find out, well, what, what's the, what are the barriers? What are the reasons? What are the motivations behind all of this? Interestingly, when you add two of these factors together, inactivity re rates rise even more. So if you have a limited illness and you have a lower income, then you're even more uh, uh, less likely to be inactive. Um, th these are the stats for the previous year. Uh, but I've left those in just so that you can look at your leisure and you can see the differences. I should say, actually, the uh, the grey squares um, are the England averages. So overall, we're doing quite well as a county. And I'd like to think it's because of some of the partnership work, some of the work that you're doing. Uh, but still, you can still see where some of those um, inequalities lie and when you look at the picture for young people it follows a similar kind of pattern now this slide is looking at activity levels not inactivity levels but you can see some very fam familiar patterns and you can see the one that's highlighted around family affluence if you have a high family affluence you're far more likely to be active than a low family affluence so a very, very similar patterns. We also take in information from the census and we know that as a population, uh, we, are, um, we are growing. So we're likely to have, I think we're 1.2 million at the moment and that's going up. Uh, we're also an aging population and we're becoming more ethnically diverse. And going back to the previous slide, we know that older people and people from ethnically diverse communities are less likely to be active. So that's going to have a knock on effect in terms of our activity levels. So, again, we just need to be aware of that. And the idea is that we then put the resources when they're where they're most needed. Just going back to that map, then we can also map the activity levels relative to the area, and this is inactivity. So the, the red areas are the areas that are most inactive. So again, I think this has got a, an influence in relation to where we work, how we work, and the, the resources that we, uh, we funnel into different areas. So again, just for a bit of fun, and don't worry, um, you're not going to be called out or anything. This is just purely for your 
personal pleasure and satisfaction, we're just going to do a little bit of an insight quiz. So uh, this is just for you in your head. You can write it down if you want. Uh, we're not going to do any score or anything. But it's just um, going to go through a few things and it just gives you a bit of a feel for some of the key stats across uh, Hertfordshire for sport and physical activity. So children eligible for free school meals in Hertfordshire, what is the size of that? Um, so, yeah, just uh, note it down yourself. And the answer is 30,000. So that links into our happy program, which is an activity and food program for children who are eligible for free school meals. So all of those children can come onto our happy camps uh, that are run throughout the school holidays. So a really important uh, stat for us, uh, but it does link into that stat around low income families as well. It's quite a big number. Year six children who are overweight or obese in Hertfordshire. What do we think the number is? Nine, 19 or 29? 29%. So again, uh, quite a few implications in relation to activity levels. And certainly uh, one of our objectives is to try and reduce that or at least keep it stable. So the task here, and I think you've already had a few clues, is to put these, um, these um, headings on the right-hand side in the right order relative to the graph. So this is activity levels of young people in Hertfordshire, 21-22. The average across... Uh, all of Hertfordshire is 48%. So these are the, the least active people. Um, but who are, which order should it go in? Okay, so if you've done that, this is the order. So years three to four, particularly inactive. So we think that's related to the fact that certainly at school, activity programs don't really kick in until uh years five and six so that that might be a factor there we've already talked about low affluence and ethnically diverse and girls participate less than boys so health impacts of aging when we experience a long-term health condition or disability we are nearly how many times more likely to be inactive than those of us without this is despite the evidence that being active can help manage many health conditions and reduce the impact and severity of some symptoms so the answer is three times more likely so quite a significant stat this one is not a quiz this one is just for your information but just maps at inactivity rates over a number of years and you can see the gap. Um, this is 2021, between 18%, those who are from higher income families with those who are on lower incomes, 34% are inactive. So that just shows you the gap. Uh, estimated no number of new homes being built in the next 10 to 15 years in Hertfordshire, which relinks to, uh, links to our increasing population um, there's also a big link here in terms of in in relation to our active environments work so we want these new homes to be uh, built with active design in mind that really encourages an active lifestyle so people can walk to the shops walk to school potentially cycle to work things like that so any ideas 100,000 new homes. So massive amount and a massive opportunity if we get that right relative to active environments and active uh, design. And that's one of my work areas, which I'll come on to later. Uh, I think this might be the last one. So just link in from there. Um, 
overall, what percentage of our journeys involve cycling, either as the entire journey or as part of a journey which is taken from the Hertfordshire traffic and transport data? Um, I should have done a higher or lower on this one. So um, have, a, have a little guess, but um, you might be surprised to find it's really low, 2.2. And we know that active travel can really help in terms of health benefits, but also benefit the environment by reducing pollution. So, um, so again, a big upturn potential, uh, which again relates to one of my work areas around active travel. So hopefully you enjoyed that. Um, and it gives you a bit of a feel for some of the stats that are driving our, um, our priorities and our work areas. We've created the physical activity story map. And again, when you get the slide, you can get the link just there. And it provides a one-stop shop across the range of different themes that I've just mentioned there. You can see them on the slide deck. And then when you click onto those, you can see a whole range of stats, uh, drivers, uh, stats that are relative to Hertfordshire. We've got some interactive maps in there. And it paints a bit of a picture relative to those areas of work. And that those, those uh, tiles are going to be updated on an ongoing basis as, as information changes. But if you haven't already, that's a great thing to look at and, and provides a great snapshot relative to the insight for Hertfordshire Sport and Physical Activity. We call it the story map. So... Uh, I'll just pause there for a minute just to see whether um, anybody's got any comments, um, any questions, any um, any things that they'd like to share. All, all good so far? Yes, Ruth. Oh, you need to come off mute. Well, I just think I was must have... Click the wrong button, apologies. Um, I just wondered if you had any interaction with the National Child Measurement Programme, it being, seeing that stat with the year six children, whether there's any sort of referrals that take place into HSV programmes or if that happens separately. Yeah, well, we, 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 we've we got um, one of our staff works very closely with schools um, and we have a link with the activity, the Active Lives Children Survey, whether we're linked in with uh, health colleagues with regard to what you just said, I'm not too sure. Now we've got a couple of health colleagues on the call, uh, Tanya and Zoe. I'm not sure whether you're familiar with with that. I haven't come across it, Ruth, if I'm being honest. Uh, but I know uh, we do link really closely with with the health sector in Hertfordshire. So. Yeah, sorry to put you on the spot, Tanya and Zoe, but have you come across that particular survey? I haven't, no, to be fair, Adrian. Um, yeah, for sort of the younger adults and things, but definitely something we can have a look into, isn't it? And uh, find out a bit more across the board as to what's going on there. Yeah, yeah. So we'll, we'll make a note of it. Was there anything... Um, that you wanted to mention in relation to that Ruth or just you know general no I just uh, it's just because it. I mean I, I work in public health so it's something that I could ask colleagues as well from from our perspective obviously that school nurses come into children at year six and have a, a standardized measuring program which is where that I presume that stat comes from so it'd be really interesting to see what happens with those children who potentially would benefit from physical activity whether they're making their way to your services or whether they're picked up by another leisure provider it sounds like perhaps they're not coming through to HSP, but there may be opportunities for that kind of joint working if you're offering specific programs for children of, sort of year six age. Yeah, yeah. I think there is a connection there, whether it's very specific to that, mm -hmm. uh, but certainly, you know, we're working in relation to schools linked to preschool meals. We're working with the, with the healthy hubs at a local level. So there will be local connections there. But yeah, thanks for raising that. And we'll, we'll pick that one up. Uh, ben? Yeah, because what I wanted to say is, it, is in addition to what uh, Ruth was saying, I know, for example, with HSP do fit for the rent sessions, which offer physical activity to anyone who is on free school meals. Could they, maybe that's the sort of aspect of a strategy you use to help benefit that in a way. Yeah, 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 definitely. Um, 
which we call our happy program now. Actually, the fit, fed, and red bit has has changed slightly. But but you're right, Ben. That's uh, that that's the main link uh, to to our activity program. And as I said, there's there's lots of links across different strands of health. Um, great. Okay. So um, if there are any more questions, I'll just carry on. Um, so I'm just going to do a video at this stage. So just bear with me a minute. So um, this is a video. I just wanted to highlight one of the things that we're doing. We do lots of different things, and I'll come on to that in a minute. But this just highlights uh, one of our programs around uh, inclusive active aging. And it's a really nice video just to uh, give you a snapshot of the, the kind of things that we do. Live Longer Better in Hertfordshire is our local activation of the National Revolution. It's a movement, not a project, and we're seeking to change local culture from one of inevitable care to enable our older adults to live longer, happier and healthier lives. Today we had the Live Longer Better in Hertfordshire Celebration Day at the University of Hertfordshire. We were so thrilled with the response that we have with over 400 bookings. It just shows that there's so much interest in this sector and, and supporting people to live longer better. I turned 70 this year and it was a big thing for me. I've got some health conditions and I'm so keen to claw back time. And I thought, what's your purpose, Di? What are you going to do? And then this all came together and it was just brilliant. And I've loved the day. I did the Tai Chi, which I've only done once before and I loved, so I'd really like to take that up as well. This is absolutely amazing today. The opportunity to, to deliver, you know, my passion, which is, which is judo and safe for falling to older adults and to have such a positive interest. It was inspiring, I'll, I'll be honest. Today was really good. It uh, exceeded our expectations. We're looking to develop pickleball, um, mainly for the sort of more mature uh, audience. And I think we're going to be seeing a lot of those people turning up at sessions right round the county in the next uh, month or so. Today it's been absolutely inspiring and completely motivating. I am so excited. We are not defined by our age or disability or our health. We can find a way to do these things. So please pluck up courage. And it's not just about doing the exercises, it's about the social engagement that we have when we do these things. Anyone thinking that they want to improve or change their lives, please join Live Longer Better. Hey, well, I um, hope you enjoyed that. that was, I always think that's really inspiring. Um, and it just gives you a flavor of the impact of our work, but also one of the things that we're involved in. And uh, we got involved in terms of putting that day together, bringing all the partners together. There were elements of come and try it, but there's also elements of understanding uh, workshops around inclusive active aging and also bringing partners together to, to, to think about how we can think about this as a system and, and improve it for, for the long term. So it kind of encapsulates the, the way that we work and, and the kind of things that we do. And I'll highlight uh, some of the other programs as well. Um, so, yeah, I'll just carry on with the presentation. So that was the video. Um, again, what you can have a look at is our impact report. We produced one, uh, a midterm one in December. And that gives you a bit of a flavor for some of the things that we do. And we've got three other videos in there as well. So again, when you get this slide date, you can click on that. It's on our website as well. And you can uh, run through some, uh, some different things that we do. And this is just going back to our strategy, which we call Uniting the Movement in Hertfordshire and picks up our strategic objectives. So all the projects and what have you that we run, they fall within these six categories. Um, so you can see, you can read them yourselves in terms of our priority areas. And 
the, the thing to say on this is that they're all interconnected. So the things that we're doing in place through our active local program will um, also pick up things that we do around active environments and health and sport for social change. So whilst these things are in certain categories, a lot of them are interconnected. And also one of the common threads is workforce development. So within all of these areas, we need a fit for purpose, inclusive and diverse workforce. So that's something that gets picked up across all these strategic objectives. So this is um, just a kind of handy compendium just to demonstrate the range and depth of different projects that we're involved in. And I've classified them ac across those different strategic objectives. So um, you'll be pleased to know we're not going to go through all of them today, but it just gives you a feel for, for the range and depth. Now, uh, what I'll also do with the slide deck is send you a project update report, which goes into a little bit of detail about the background to each of these and progress and learning to date. And what you can do is just pick off them relative to your areas of work. And there might be areas where you think, yeah, we could work together on this. Or um, did, did, were you aware that we were doing X, Y and Z and, and let us know about it? So a great way to connect into the work that we're doing. And as I've said, with all of these projects, they're all done in collaboration anyway. So hopefully that gives you a bit of a feel. And I'm just going to pick out one or two of these things just to give you a bit more information about some of the projects. So this is our Active Local, our place-based project. And if you remember when you when I showed you the map of Hertfordshire and the inactivity areas, this speaks to that area and it goes to work in those areas which are the most disadvantaged and the most inactive. So the kind of two categories you can see on the left hand side, we're working across 10 areas and three of those areas are the most inactive where we're putting more of our resources. And you can see there that funnel on the top right where, where we do have resources and where we can will funnel them into those active local areas. So that's the concept. And the outcome at the end of it is to empower those local communities to create sustainable change. And you can see a little bit of the operating model on the, on the bottom right, in terms of that um, understanding and um, exploring, mapping the local area, leading to an action plan, which the steering group is involved in and, uh, and, and leading to local area priorities. So that's our active local um, program, which very much links into our stronger communities objective. This is our physical activity, activity for wellbeing, um, which is really looking at um, health and wellbeing across Hertfordshire, some fantastic projects and programs. Uh, including strength and balance classes, uh, a really innovative long COVID pilot where we're trying to understand and make referrals into uh, the sport and physical activity sector. We've got an activity finder. I'm going to mention that in a minute. Uh, Live longer better. You saw the video, which is all around inclusive active aging. We're doing some work to raise funding for local groups that are linked in with active aging. And at the same time, we're trying to influence the system so that some of the things that we do are not short term, they're long lasting and we get the benefits over a long period of time. So that gives you a bit of a feel around our uh, health related work. Um, a happy program, which, uh, which Ben mentioned. So this is last year's stats, but we ran 407 camps with 46,000 attendances from children aged 4 to 17, 4 to 17 years old, for children who are on free school meals. So a massive program. We're using a whole range of accredited providers and we help them and support them and train them to provide really high quality uh, holiday camps. Uh, we are really pleased that we're able to um, attract 37% of children from ethnically diverse backgrounds and 20% uh, 
with a disability or send. Um, satisfaction rates really good, really high, and we're constantly working on improving that. And um, last year, we also worked with some Afghan refugees. So uh, that's one of our videos that I mentioned on our midterm review. So have a look at that one. Again, really powerful, really impactful work that we're doing with, uh, with our holiday activity prep program. Uh, this is the Moving More Activity Finder. So a one-stop shop for activities in Hertfordshire. Really important that you guys uh, are aware of it. And where you can, you're feeding in the activities that are going on. So this is anything from something that's happening in the community hall right through to something uh, in a leisure centre, maybe a bit more formal. And the idea is that we want everything uh, in Hertfordshire under one roof so people can find it easily. We've got around about 10,000 opportunities at the moment, but we really, really want to prioritise this and, and really grow it over this next year so that it becomes the one-stop shop. So, um, so you can get it on movingmore.co.uk and um, please link into that with the stuff that you're doing. So this is another string to our bow in relation to bringing our partners together around sharing and learning. Um, so this just gives you a feel for some of the, the workshops that we've facilitated, both um, in person and online. And we're constantly looking at that, looking at hot topics, key themes, which we would all benefit from learning more about, bringing lived experience into those workshops and learning together. So, um, so that's the nature of that work. And you can see the range of different topics we've included over the last 12 months or so. This is an important aspect. If we don't have the money, we're not able to run the project. So a big part of what we're doing, we're constantly looking at business development, looking at the trends, looking what the stats says and looking at the funding relative to those priorities. So again, this is some of the some examples of where we've drawn money into the sector and it doesn't necessarily go into our coffers, but we redistribute it across those who, who most need it uh, and to our partners to be able to run a wide range of different programs. So that's just making the point about our business development activity. And hopefully you've picked up now that we are quite unusual in a way insofar as we have we wear a number of hats and we play different roles to be able to service our mission and achieve our mission so the delivery at the top is taking less of a role um, uh, at the moment so we do something around the school games but it's certainly uh, less prominent than it has been I think mainly when we receive fundings, we then commission others, experts, to be able to deliver, whether it's strength and balance or happy program or um, multiply, which is a numeracy program. So that um, that is ten, tends to be how we work when we attract funding. As I said, we're also trying to influence the system around those work areas that, that we're involved in. So in my case, in active environments, I'm working really closely with planners so that that 100,000 new homes that I mentioned, they've got active design principles built in from the start. So that would be one example of influencing. The support, advice and campaigns. So I've already mentioned the activity finder. I've already mentioned the insight, um, the, the, um, the story map, the funding that we... Um, that, that we help in terms of finding funding. So that's an example of that, the convening, the facilitating, bringing different parties together, learn and share events and networking events and the like. And then that workforce development, which um, links into a fit for purpose workforce where we're supporting coach education programs, things like CPD for PE teachers, training for our happy providers. So this just gives you a bit of a snapshot, but I wanted to make the point that we play different roles uh, to service and achieve our mission. Did somebody have a question? I heard something. Um, 
please um, come in if uh, if you've got a question. I'll, I'll pause in a minute anyway, but um, yeah, I just wanted to mention in terms of our work, I guess, uh, slightly changing over the course of the, probably the last five years. And it's not to say that uh, we're stopping doing one side and going to the other, but there is definitely a movement uh, from, from all groups that we would work with previously to very much targeting inactive and underrepresented groups uh, from participant outputs, just purely doing it for, for the fun of it to more in terms of our social outcomes, which I've mentioned around might be crime diversion or health or educational attainment. Um, program delivery, in addition to that, we've also got this strategic influencing role and uh, previously, we did a lot of work with governing bodies of sport. We still do that, but we're also now working very much place-based and everything needs to be driven from uh, a customer base. What does our customers need uh, and starting from a, a bottom-up approach? So uh, I thought that would be useful just in terms of the, the ways of working and, and the way that's changing over time. And just linked to that very place-based way of working we want to move from this you know we're doing it for you and to you this is a program and you know it will work in this area as opposed to at the bottom it's very much understanding local needs and doing activity with and and by and, and trying to create that empowerment at a local level so that the activities reflect what people need and those delivering it reflect the local community so that's definitely a, a movement and um, it's often called asset-based community development. And just going back into that strategic role that I mentioned, one of our hats, uh, ultimately what this means is that over time, we want to change policies, practices, resource flows, relationships and power dynamics so that there's a far greater emphasis and bias towards active lifestyles and policies that promote sport and physical activity. That's what we're trying to do. Um, so, um, so that's what all of that is, is leading to. So um, again, just before we go on to how we work, um, just pause at that stage, any observations or questions? All good. Um, hopefully this is painting a bit of a picture. Um, so in terms of how we work, uh, I just wanted to go back to our values. So I'd like, we'd like to think we're very much a values driven organization and these values affect our decision making. Um, and you can see them there are being proactive, reliable, inclusive, collaborative and environmentally sustainable. Um, so. Um, as you work with us over time, um, you'll be able to uh, to test that, that that theory, if you like, in terms of whether we're really living our values. But hopefully that comes across in the way that we work and just picking a few of these things out. I've mentioned it already, but everything we do is in collaboration. So we want to hear from you. As I've said, you know, have a look at the slides afterwards. And if you think there are areas where we could work closer together, let us know. Uh, that's very much linked into our ethos. We will definitely be stronger uh, if we work collaboratively and well together as, as opposed to trying to do it uh, at, do our own thing. Uh, the sustainability is really important to us and we want to leave a legacy here in relation to the people who come after us. So um, you can see there that we take our environmental commitment seriously we've got a policy and we've got an action plan and within that action plan it links to how we run our business how it links into our projects and our work programs and we're constantly trying to advocate for more sustainable practice so again um, if you're able to when you're thinking about your work programs if you can have a think about how they might be be able to run a little bit more sustainable, even if it's a little thing, it all adds up and makes a difference. 
So just on that one uh, last week, which was part of our uh, Go Green week, we ran a couple of workshops, one around funding for sustainable projects, and one was more around understanding climate change, which was called Climate Fresk. So that was part of our, our work in this area. Uh, we're also um, tried to be an inclusive workplace, and that links into us as a business, but also advocating that and the work and the projects that we do. So again, we've got a policy and an action plan, and these are the objectives that are taken from our action plan. Um, just going back to our work programs and the fact that we're trying to make sure that the resources that we do attract are channeled and focused around those most in need. So that's a big part of our DNA and the way that we work. So um, we did a partner survey recently and asked people if um, they would recommend us to family and friends, and we came out really well, but we're certainly not resting on our laurels. We're really pleased with that, and we're really happy that we're working well with a number of partners, but it is a, a regular thing, and we'll constantly go back to partners and ask, how can we improve? How can we work better together? What are your barriers? What are your challenges? What are your opportunities? And constantly ask those questions so that we're working closely together. Um, but as it stands at the moment, we're, we're really happy with our partnership working. And this is some of the things that our partners have said about us. Again, we'll be asking you in 12 months time and, and you'll have your own opinions. But hopefully some of these positive messages are, are coming across. So just in terms of how we are organized, again, there's a link to our uh, Meet the Team on our website so you can see all those 40 people and what they do but broadly speaking we've got four areas we've got a health and well-being team which will heads up we've got a projects and programs team which takes in young people active local our schools work which matt leads we've got a transformation team which covers active environments and our workforce related projects and programs and then we've got a a kind of a governance fit for purpose theme, which um, John, our partnership director, leads and I support in relation to, to that area of work. So that's how we are, are managed and the various projects and programs fall within those three main categories, three main uh, teams. We also have a board which is made up of uh, voluntary people uh, who represent the various constituencies of sport and physical activity in Hertfordshire is quite a diverse board um, and they play a really vital role which provides that strategic overview that oversight and they play that kind of check and challenge role relative to our plans and our practices and our ways of working um, as part of what we do we have to comply to the code for sports governance tier three which is the highest level which comes from the government and Sport England. So that's our governance code, which we work within. And again, the, the, the link to the web page, to our board page is on there. So final section, this is opportunities for collaboration. So hopefully you've got a feel for what we do, how we do it. Um, so these are just some of the things that uh, I just wanna make you aware of. So as I said, I'm going to send those project updates afterwards. Please have a look at those. And if there are areas where we can link up, we'd like to hear from you. We, we run a number of learn and share events across all sorts of different themes and training and development. So again, we'd really like to, to see you come along if any of those opportunities relate to your work. We run a number of flagship annual events, uh, which you can see there. We, we get uh, various constituency groups together. So local authorities, governing bodies of sport, leisure operators, and you can see the list there. So if you are one of those people, you know, again, please make yourself known and come to those network groups. Or if you'd like to get in front of those groups relative to your work areas, we can facilitate that. 
Uh, we have a number of newsletters linked to our various themes, work areas, and we have a general newsletter. So again, make sure you are connected in with those and on our social media uh, handles. And as I said, we, we run a partner satisfaction survey. So uh, we will be sending you that uh, at, um, at the end of the year. So some specific things coming up. Um, annual partner celebration event on the 20th of June at the university, the Haviland campus, a great way to celebrate all the things that are going on across Hertfordshire. And, um, you know, it'd be similar to, you know, we're picking up some of the things that we've been talking about today, but we'll really bring, bring them to life. We'll have some fantastic keynote speakers. So definitely one to put in your diaries and come along to, um, this is the link to all our training courses, CPD. Um, so again, look at that. Um, definitely sign up to our newsletter and you'll be picking those kind of things up on a regular basis. We've got an East of England mental health in physical activity virtual conference coming up very soon, the 27th of March. So if you're interested in that, get in touch with me or one of the team that will be on our website. Uh, we have a long COVID and physical activity rehabilitation webinar on the 9th of April. So there, those are just a few things that are coming up. Again, hopefully it shows the, the breadth of the different things that we do. And as I said, make sure you signed up to the, the newsletter so you're getting regular updates and you're able to attend. So I think this is the last slide and just in time. So hopefully you enjoyed that and it gives you a good feel for what we're all about. Um, I think the key, the key takeaways are to keep in touch, sign up to the newsletter and you can get that link from our website. Join in. You know, as I said, it's all about collaboration. So join our network groups, come to the events and tell us about the things that you're doing. Um both in terms of the insight, but also the projects themselves and where we can connect, we will. Um, it's, um, you know, there's no, um, there's no blueprint in the work that we do. So it, it, we need to be learning and sharing from one another and picking up that, that insight and constantly improving and refining our work. So again, let us know about the work that you're involved in and if you've got any developments or key learning we, we want to hear about it and we've got some forums and some portals where we can share that insight with others uh, maximize the training opportunities there's loads out there uh, quite a lot of it is free uh, some of it is paid but um, it really helps in terms of developing your fresh professional and, and personal skills and knowledge so uh, certainly get into that and um, as I said, you know, get in touch, email or phone. If you've got any questions, queries, comments or areas for connection, we'd really like to hear from you. So I think uh, that is it. I'm just going to, um, yeah, stop there. And yeah, just um, in invite, open up if anybody's got any questions or comments. Yeah, Ruth. Yeah, I just wondered um, if you have good links into primary care, if GPs are um, good at signposting patients to some of the activity on the activity finder, et cetera, because it sounds like there'd be a lot that would really benefit people coming in to GPs for other issues. Yes, Zoe. I don't mind chipping in here. <laughs> um, <laughs> so we've actually just started running some primary care network events, so like um, target events. Um, in different areas we've been primarily focusing on our active local areas first but we're open to offering them anywhere um, and it's an opportunity for us to um, connect share um, things that we've got going on um, sharing about things like um, an active practice charter that um, GPs can get signed up to to help embed physical activity into their practices so yeah um, that's definitely one that you can come back to us or I can drop drop the email in um, in the chat if um, if you want to get in touch with me personally and I can go through that. Fabulous. Thanks, Zoe. That's right. Thanks, Zoe. Thanks, Ruth. Uh, any other questions, Ben? 
Hi, Adrian. I just wanted to ask, um, do you have any like send, send ch children late provisions? Because I'm currently doing some work at a send school in Stevenage and um, what I'm seeing, what I'm sort of seeing, I don't feel they get as much opportunities to take part in physical activity as maybe maybe they could deal with, could do with. So I was wondering if IHSP do anything with any send provisions at all? Yeah, so yeah. just going back yeah. to that happy yeah. program, uh, our holiday activity program. So um, they will cater for send children, both in terms of uh, all the camps, but also there's some dedicated camps as well. And I think the stat was around 30% of our provision overall. Uh, we attract send children, which is which is pretty good. And also within our school's work, um, uh, Tanya Angus run, runs that. We try to prioritise and focus and make available opportunities for, for SEND children. So I'm sure there are lots of other things that we could be doing, but certainly we've got a focus around that. We're certainly aware of the, the situation um, and um, we, we try and target those children and, uh, and adults as well. Um, so I'm not, I'm not sure whether colleagues want to come in on that uh, who are in the room. But certainly, yeah, it is a focus. Great stuff. OK, well, um, as I said, hopefully that's uh, painted a bit of a picture uh, of what heart, sport and physical activity is all about, what we do, how we do it and, and where our priorities lie. So uh, really appreciative of your time today. Thank you very much. Um, I'll be sending the slides and the recording out so you can click on some of those links. And as I've said, um, we, uh, we really welcome your input and your learning and your connections. So please get in touch uh, as and, and when required. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Adrian. Thanks all. Cheers. Thank you very much, Adrian.